Am I awake? Am I prepared? Are you listening to my prayer? Can you hear my voice? Can you understand? Am I awake? Am I prepared? Ya la 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 Am I awake? Am I prepared? Are you listening? Can you hear my voice? Can you understand? Am I awake? Am I prepared? Ya la 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 Ya la la Barechu et Adonai Hamevorach Baruch Adonai Hamevorach Le'olam va'eh Le'olam va'eh
Shabbat Shalom and welcome. We begin with a song of welcome. Page 128. Shabbat Shalom and welcome. Shabbat Shalom. If it's your first time at Temple Israel, <laughs> any first timers in the house? Amazing, so many of us. Welcome to you. If you've been with us many times before, welcome to you. We like to say here, wherever you come from, you've always belonged right here with us. So we're so glad to have you. I am Cantor Julia Kadrain, so happy to be joined by Rabbi Ilana nematov Bressler, by Mike Lantowski and Sean and Eric in the back who make sure that we can be heard and also are creating a beautiful um, video of this service that will be archived, that will be available for all of us, um, which means we don't need our phones. We don't need to do any filming or photo photographing because we will capture everything for you that will be available for you. Most of all, we are so grateful to be able to celebrate Seamus becoming bar mitzvah this morning, taking his place as an adult member of our community. What a beautiful opportunity for joy and celebration and togetherness. And to help in our celebration, can I borrow that book on top for you? Thank you. To help in our celebration, most of you got this prayer book when you came in, Mishkan Tefillah. If you didn't, you can grab one right outside. This is the prayer book we're going to use for most of the service. We will help you follow along in it. There is generally um, a Hebrew reading and an English reading, so if you get bored, which you shouldn't, because Seamus is going to be amazing, um, and you're here to celebrate him, there's other things to read on the page, so you can learn more. Even if Hebrew is not a language you understand, there's the transliteration as well. We want this service to be accessible to you, and in that vein, we want to help you celebrate Seamus. So at the very end... When Seamus is done, there are two words in Judaism that we say to say congratulations. And those words are mazel tov. Can you try that? Mazel tov. Wow, you're good at that. So at the end of the service, with a little more energy than you just had, um, <laughs> Seamus and his cousins and Rory are going to say Kiddush and Motzi, and then we're going to wish that um, Seamus mazel tov. We're going to say congratulations, which, by the way, let's try it again and say it to Seamus. Now let's say mazel tov. Mazel, mazel tov. tov. Seamus, you've done so much to get to this moment. And now you are going to help lead us. Before we do that, though, we have a way of celebrating in Judaism through singing. So we're going to invite everyone to turn to page 306 so that we can celebrate, that we can honor this day with some Hebrew that you can all do. I think one of the best ways to create instant community is to raise our voices together. So this psalm on page 306 says, let everything that breathes Praise God. So raise your hand if you're breathing. <laughs> that means that's really what that is, is a wide open invitation. You don't have to have any particular background. You don't have to know Hebrew. You don't have to think you're a good singer to be part of this psalm of praise. 
there's a simple, a, a single simple word that we'll return to again and again, which is just hallelujah. And it sounds like this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Listen. Hallelujah. 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 So that's everything you need to know. Let's make some sound together. Hallelujah. celebration and honoring this moment. This is a moment where you get to come up in front of the community right here and we, your parents are going to present you with a talit from your great uncle Mark who unfortunately can't be here. This is a gift from him. So come on up here with your parents. They're going to hold the talit in front of you as you recite the blessing. And then you are going to place it upon your shoulders as a way of accepting that this is your your gift. Ata Adonai Elhenu Melahalam, Sher Kitchanu, Vimitra Tav, Lahita Tev, Batitit. Amen. Take that tummy. Hold it. Body or spirit, and we turn to page 313. <laughs> Ya 
Turn to page 314 and read with me at the top of the page. The world is sunlight, restoring the soul, rejoicing the heart, bringing light to the eyes. More welcome than gold, a Torah from heaven. I have no light to give the morning. My Torah, my special human gift, is words. As I bring my words forth from silence, welcome them, you who deems the sun from darkness. Baruch Ata Adonai Yotzer Hamorot. Please turn to page 317. We read responsibly. O oh God, inspiration and guide for all. You've spoken in a thousand tongues for us to hear. In every land and every age, your children have heard you and imagined you in separate ways. And yet, O oh God, you are one unifier of humanity. We give, we give thanks, thanks for the sages and teachers who bring us understanding of your will. Gratefully, we recall the lawgivers and prophets, the psalmists and sages of Israel. And joyfully, we remember that from the dawn of Israel's life, we would turn to you and find purpose. May the teachings of our ancestors live on in our minds and their passion for righteousness stir our hearts. Help us to live so that our daily conduct reveals the beauty and the wisdom of your truth. Baruch Please join with me on page 319. <speaking in Hebrew> Asher anochi mitzavecha, hayom alevavecha, vishinantam levanecha, vidibarta bamam, vishiltecha bevetecha, uvlechtecha vaderech, ushochpecha ufkumecha, ushartam leot aliatecha, Vehayulan totafot bene necha, Uchtaf tam, Almizizot betecha, Uvisha recha, Leman tis keru, Vasi tem et comitzotai, Vitem kiloshim lelohechem, Ani Adonai elohechem, Asher hotzeti etem, Me'eret mitraim, liyot lachem, Elohim, ani Adonai Eloheichem. We read together in the middle of page 321. Sing the song of men and women joined in the understanding and respect. The song of God's miracles and earth protected and cherished, a gift for our children and the generations to come. The song of a land once ravished by war, now quiet and content, her soldiers home to leave no more. The song of a world redeemed, the song of peace. We continue with Micha Mocha, our song for freedom and peace, on three on page 322. <laughs> Oh, no. 
that's going on in the world today, we've added an extra prayer into our services for our B'nai Mitzvah, and that's a prayer for the state of Israel. Rory, we want to invite you up to, you can bring the book with you. <laughs> we want to invite you up to read this prayer for Israel so that we can think about Israel in this moment, even though we're celebrating, we know that those in Israel need, other way, <laughs> need blessings and prayers for peace and safety and security as well. It's on page 377 if you'd like to follow along. Avinu Shebashayim, O Heavenly One, Protector and Redeemer of Israel, bless the state of Israel, which marks the dawning of hope for all who seek peace. Send your light and truth to all who lead and advise, guiding them with your good in counsel, establish peace in the land and fullness of joy for all who dwell there. And together we say, Amen. Amen. Not your koach. Give your brother a hug. <laughs> Thanks, Rory. I'd like to invite... Hold on. Oh, okay. Now do it. I'd like to invite my cousins, Victor and Franklin, to offer a prayer for peace. No, you don't need that book now. <laughs> we just want to keep you all on your toes. Peace will come. Hold on. He's got to read it too. No, no, no. Oh, you already oh, figured it out? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it out. <laughs> so, peace will come through the grace of God and the work of humanity, compassion and kindness, forgiveness and love, patience and gratitude, justice and mercy, empathy and understanding. You who make, oh, come on. <laughs> you who make peace above, get our hearts in our hands in service to each other in your world to bring peace to all the nations of the earth, all people, everywhere. Yeah, sure, go off to both of you. Give Seamus a hug. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. We turn to page 323, and together we rise in body or spirit. Adonai sefatai tiptach ufi agite hilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch ata Adonai. Eloheinu, Elohe avoteinu v'imoteinu, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leha, Ha'el Hagado Hagibor Bahanora, El El Yon. Gomel chasadim tovim, vekonehe hako, vezocher chastei avot veimahot, umevi geula livne venehem, leman shemo behahava, melech ozer umoshia umagain, baruch ata adonai. Magin Avraham ve'ezrat Sarah. 3.25. Ata gibor le'olam Adonai, mechaye hako'o, ata rav le'hoshia, mashiv haruach, umorid hagashem, mechakel chayim bechesed. Mechaye hako berachamim rabim. So omech noflim berofech oholim. Umatir asurim. Umekayem emunato lishene afar. Micha mocha baal giburot. Umi do melech, mele 
מחממית ומחיה ומצמיח ישוע ונאמן אתה להחיות הכל ברוך אתה אדוני מחיה הכל Page three hundred twenty six. <laughs> ככתוב על יד נביאיך, וקרוי זה על זה ואמר, קדוש, 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 אדוני צבאות, ולא כל הארץ כבודו, אדיר אדיר Adonai, Adoneinu, Mahadir Shimcha Lecho Haaretz Baruch Kevon Adonai Bimkomo Echad Hu Eloheinu Hu Avinu Makeinu Moshienu Vehu Yashmienu Verachamav Lienei Kochai Ani Adonai Eloheichem Im lo Adonai Leolam Elohai scroll is the secret of our people's life from Sinai until now. Its teaching is love and justice, goodness and hope. Freedom is its gift to all who treasure it. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echai Echad Eloheinu Gadol Seamus, the words that are kept in our Torah are really incredibly special. They've been passed down from generation to generation. And today we have an opportunity to pass this Torah from generation to generation and to you. So we invite your parents and your grandparents and indeed you to take your place in the chain of tradition so that we might hand this Torah to you. You're a gift and you're a blessing. You are history in song. You are hope and you are healing. You are learning to be strong. This Torah contains stories. This Torah contains stories that teach us who we are and who to be. 
And as we pass it down, Seamus, you become one more in this chain of tradition to take the Torah into your arms. And then you don't just take it, you commit to passing it down to the next generation in whatever way that looks like for you. Let we protect this chain from generation to generation. Let Dorvador, these lips will praise your name. Let Dorvador, Nagid God, Lecha. Let Dorvador, we protect this chain. From generation to generation, let Dorvador, these lips will praise your name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 el becocho, hallelujah, bequia uso, hallelujah, big burrot of hallelujah, care of good love, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. decided to send us on a wild goose chase in the Torah. Uh, the beauty of the Torah is it's not in a book. It's in a scroll. Fortunately for you, you don't have to scroll through a bunch of pages. You have a book in the back of the seat in front of you or in the seat under you. If you are in the um, front row, it's underneath your seat. We like to complicate things here. Um, so in that Torah commentary on page 154, you can follow along with what Seamus is reading. Seamus is reading from the book of Genesis, the first book in our Torah, from Parshat Chaye Sarah, which means the life of Sarah. And as he'll tell us later, it doesn't actually have anything to do with her life. It has to do with her death. 
So Seamus is actually reading about what happens right after she dies, and he's going to teach us a story about her and Abraham next. So I'm not going to give too much away. So if you follow along on page 154 in that bigger book that says Torah on the front, you can follow along. If you don't want to, you can just listen as Seamus is going to read us the Hebrew. And we are so excited to hear that. In order to do that, we need to call up some people to honor them. La'alot means to go up, and literally our, our bima is raised. And so we invite people up to, to bless the Torah reading and to get to be up here to honor you as a person who is important in Seamus' life and family. So for the honor of the first Aliyah, we call on Seamus' grandmother and cousin, Ellen and Aviva. Please join us on the bima. Ya'amdu Esther Basha Bachmuel Vefumalea, Aviva Bat Peleg Do Vekalista. Baruch Adonai Hambarach Le'olam Ba'ed Baruch Atah Adonai Hambarach Le'olam Ba'ed Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Ha'amim V'natan Lanu Et Toroto Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Vai hu haye sara mea shana vesrim shana besheva shanim shene haye sara vatamot sara bekiryat arba hi hevron beert kenaan Vayavo Avraham, Lisbod Isara, Beliv Gota, Vayakom Avraham, Mea Pene Meto, Vaidaber El Benehe Lamor. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natamanu torat emes, v'chaye olam nata betoheinu, Baruch atah Adonai, noten ha-Torah. Amen. For the honor of the second Aliyah, we have a group whose official title is the Six Short Jewish Guys from Tufts and Friends. We'll invite you forward now. Todd, Scott, Michael, Michael, and Michael. Yaham Du, Shmuel, Schneer Mendel, Mikael, Mikael, Yunkel, Aron. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam. Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim. Vinatan Lanu Et Torato. Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. Gerid Oshav Anochi Imachem Tenu Li Ahuzat Kever Imachem Veek Bera Meti Milfanai Vayanu Venehe Et Avraham Lemor 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 Lo Shema Enu Adoni Nasi Elohim Ata 
Betoheinu, Bemivhar, Kevarenu, Kevor et me teha. Meal ish me menu. I lost it. Et Kevor, Loichle, Mimha, Mikvor, me teha. For the honor of the third Aliyah, we're so happy to call up Seamus's parents, Jeff and Brianne. Ya amdu, irid bad Kevin ve Leslie, Yaakov, Yosef, Ben Reuven ve Esther Basha. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach leolam vaed. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach leolam vaed. Baruch Adonai Elohim Melech Halam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Ami Benatam Lanu Et Toreto Baruch Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Vayakum Avraham Vayishtachu Leam HaAretz Livnei Chet Vai de ber itam le mor in yesh et nafshechem lik vor et meti milfanai shema uni ufig uli be efron ben tohar. Vai ten li et mearat hamafela asher lo. Asher bikte sadehu behese male it nena li beto hechem lea huzat kave. Ruhatar nai Elohenu mel halam asher natonanu toratemet. So Seamus, this is an amazing moment because for the first time in your whole life, you'll be called up to the Torah by your Hebrew name. This is like our way of calling you to take your place as an adult member of this community. And it's been amazing to watch you answer the call with such kindness and such courage. You should know that it takes real grit and courage to come up here and read from the Torah. And you've done that so beautifully and amazingly. And we know that you bring that kindness and that courage not just to this bar mitzvah process, but also to soccer and to swimming and to the way that you are with your family and friends and really the way that you walk through the world, Seamus. So it's in the spirit of appreciation for the person that you are and for the way that you have answered this call that I call you to the Torah by your Hebrew name for the first time now. Ya amod, ya amod, ha ha bar mitzvah. Shmuel ben Yaakov, Yosef ve irit la ali ale Torah. Barhu et Adonai hamura. Baruch Adonai hamura leolam va ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Mikohamim Venatan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Ve'efron Yoshev Beto Benehet Vayan 
Ephron Hachiti et Avraham Beosne Benehet Leho Ba e Sha'ar Iro Lemor Lo Adoni Shema Eni Asade Natati La Vehamara Asher Bo Leha Natatiha Le ene bene ami natatiha la ke vor me teha. Vaish tahu avraham li li vor am ha aret. Baruch ata adonai elohenu mel haolam asher natan lanu torat emet. Vechaye olam nata betohenu, bru ata ronai no tain hatora. Amen. Yashar Koach. Once Torah has been led, read, we lift it high for everyone to see, and we invite Seamus' uncle Peter to come up and lift the Torah. I hear this is a lighter Torah. Lighter Torah. I'm going to invite everyone to rise. Vezota Torah, Asher Sam Moshe, Leaf Neben Israel. Avi Adonai, Vehan Moshe. Lay, 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 years ago, our rabbis decided that reading from the Torah wasn't enough, that our, we needed to read something else that completed the Torah reading, and so they came up with this idea of haftarah, meaning completion, which comes from the books of our prophets. They decided there was a connection between certain parts of the prophets and the Torah portions, and they created this connection. 2,000 years later, we said some of these haftarah portions are not that meaningful for our teens. And so, starting about a year and a half ago, we decided why not let our teens pick the Haftar portion that will fit for them. So, we have a session where they get to see our top 10 or 12 Haftarot, and they pick the one that's the most meaningful for them. And that's the one they write about and then read about. So, Seamus is going to tell us which one he chose, and then he's going to tell us about it. If you have that Torah book out, you can put it away. You don't need it anymore. Now because we like to make it complicated. There is a laminated sheet. That is what Seamus, Seamus is gonna read the Hebrew. You're gonna see the English. He's gonna tell you what he's reading in a moment, and you're gonna see that on your sheet. For my half Torah, I chose to read from the prophet Zechariah, from chapter seven, verses nine to 10. I chose this passage because I think it is very important that we do not mistreat the less fortunate or the less privileged. This is an important lesson for us today because many people judge others 
based on status or where they came from. The world would be a better place if we, were, if we treated people the same. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Ashe Bahar Ben Vim Tovim Verata Vidi Braham Hane Emarim Be Emethet Baruch Ata Adonai Haboher Batora U Moshe Abdo U Yisrael Amo U Vinvi E Ha Emet Bad Sedek Vayachi Devar Adonai El Zechariah Lemur Ko Amar Adonai Tzevaot Lemur Mishpat emet sefotu behesef verachamim asu ish et achiv veamana veatom ger veani alta shoku verat ish achiv Al Tachshavu Bilivav Chem. And the world of the internal to Zechariah continued. Thus said God, execute true justice. Show mercy and compassion to every neighbor. Do not mistreat the widow or the orphan, the alien or the poor. Do not plot evil against one another. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Sur Kol HaOlamim Tzadik Bechol HaDorot HaEl HaNeeman HaOmer VeOseh HaMdaber UMKayem SheKol DeBarav Emet VaTzedek Al HaTorah VeAl HaAvodah VeAl HaNeviim Ve'ayom ha-shabbat ha-zeh Shenatata lanu Adonai Eloheinu Likdusha v'limuha Lecha vodud ultifaret Al ha-kol Adonai Eloheinu Anachnu modim lach Umvarfim otach Yitbarach shimcha Befi kolchai Tamid le'olam va'ed Baruch Ata Adonai, Mekadesh HaShabbat. Amen. Take a deep breath. No, that was a real one. So all the Hebrew, you're done with. Now it's just English. Okay? Before you read, though, we ask our B'nai Mitzvah students to do three things in the service. You now need notebooks for the next few minutes so you can put everything down. Um, we ask our B'nai Mitzvah students to do three things. We ask them to be our shaliach tzibor, our prayer leader. Shemus has led us in prayer wonderfully. We ask them to be our Baal Kore, our Torah and Haftorah reader. You did that excellently. And we ask them to be our darshan, our teacher. Shemus, do you want to read your Dvar Torah for us? Yes, please. Great. So Shemus wrote an excellent Dvar Torah that he wants to share with us. And so that's why you don't need anything. Just take in the words he has to share with you. Uh, let me tell you a story about Abraham, the first Jewish person to walk the earth. When Abraham was an old man, he was told by God to leave his home and discover a new land. God promised that his family would be huge and that he would be blessed. Abraham followed God's lead, heading south to the land of Canaan. He was joined by his wife, Sarah, and their household servants. Around this time, Abraham became increasingly worried about his need for a son. How could he hand down Canaan and make it a great nation when he didn't even have a son? In response, God promised him that he would have one and confirmed that his son would inherit the land of Canaan. Finally, when Abraham was 100 years old, Sarah gave birth to a baby boy. They named him Isaac. 
After this, God told him to take his son to a mountain and sacrifice him. He immediately set off to the mountain for the sacrifice. This proved to God that he trusted and was loyal to God. Instead, he sacrificed a nearby ram in place of his son and returned home. Here's where my part of the Torah comes in. Abraham's wife, Sarah, died when she was 127 years old in Hebron, the land of Canaan. Abraham mourns her and asks the people that live there for a burial space so that he can bury Sarah. Abraham had his, had his sights set upon the cave of Machpelah, which belonged to Ephron, son of Zohar. Knowing that Abraham is close to God, he is willing to give Abraham the land he wants for free. But Abraham insists on paying for it. When I learned this, I was confused, as I've never refused something for free. But Abraham insists on paying for it. Sure, he's wealthy, but why go through more trouble than necessary to get something? Different rabbis have different answers to why Abraham wanted to buy the cave or the land it was on. One said that Abraham buys the land because it shows that land in Israel is the most important. Ibn Ezra said that by buying it, it proves the land is in his inheritance. Midrash says that it shows he has good intentions, is humble, and trusts God. My explanation is that Abraham wanted to own the land so he could visit his wife's grave in the future and wanted to make it official by acquiring the land in a way that no one could question. Abraham thought that if he hadn't made it official that the cave Sarah was buried in was owned by him, that he might not have been allowed back to visit, or the land would have been claimed by someone else. This way he could put it in his inheritance and pass it on to his descendants. After I learned this, I realized that this connects to my life and my past. I was born in Westport and raised there until I was three, in the same house that I live in now. When I was three, my Westport, my family and I moved over the Atlantic to London. For the first 10 years of my life, London was my sanctuary and the place I thought of as home. It was there where I learned how to swim, ride a bike, play football, soccer, and all the things I like to do to this day. Through all of my upbringing in London, I was always the American kid and constantly reminded of it because of my accent. I was always asking what our life back in America was like and what our house looked and felt like. Most importantly, I always felt like I had a sense of being American, had the comfort of knowing that I had a home if something ever happened. When I moved back just last year, it felt like coming home, and it felt like I belonged here. Both Abraham and my story showed the importance of having land that you own and can come back to. When you leave your home and community, it is important to have a place that no one can take away from you. It is always a huge benefit to you to have something to fall back on. My Torah portion teaches me about having a people to come back to. For me, it was here at Temple Israel. I was in Temple Preschool before I left, and to come back to such a welcoming community really highlights about what I love about Judaism. Thank you all for being here. You've helped me get to this point, and I'm so grateful for every last one of you. Thank you to my tutor, Rabbi Heller, who's guided me through this process, and thank you to Rabbi MB and Cantor Kadrin for helping me prepare for the final parts of my service. Thank you to my friends who always managed to make me laugh, even on my worst days. Thank you to my brother, Rory, who is always there, whether I want him to be or not. <laughs> and finally, thank you to my parents, who have stood by my side, supporting me every step of the way for all my life. Scoring a goal in soccer or getting in trouble at school, you guys are always there to celebrate or deal with my successes or issues. Love going on family ski trips and long bike rides through London or over mountains. Thank you for never doubting me. I love you both to the moon and back. Yashar Koach, Seamus. So, good, another deep breath. You're not done. You just get to listen and take things in. So I'm going to speak to you. You can sit with your family or you can sit with Cantor Kadrain. Okay. Go give the, your dad a hug. Seamus, I didn't think of this before, but sometimes we're giving Torah portions because they tell us something about what our future is going to be, and sometimes we're given a Torah portion randomly because they fit who we are so well. This Torah portion, we were learning together, and I was like, have you ever been on a journey and you didn't know where you were going? You were like, yeah. <laughs> so what I want to say is that maybe this isn't the end of the, your journey of not knowing where you're going or going somewhere new, that throughout your life, you're gonna to go to new places. You're not gonna know what's happening. 
And you're going to have to figure out what that journey is and what you're supposed to get from it. What I also want to say is you're both a little like Abraham and thankfully a lot not like Abraham. You're a little like Abraham in, like you told us, you moved around a lot, you had to make your way home, you had to figure out what was going on. Fortunately, you weren't tested quite as much as Abraham was. We're not going to do any sacrifices here, thank God. Um, but you did tell us about a land to come back to. You told us that, and what you didn't talk about, though, was the value of knowing that your family would be there, that when you traveled to that place, the three people sitting next to you were going to be with you, that you were never alone on that journey, just like Abraham. I don't know that Abraham would have been able to do the journey without the family that was with him, just like you have family supporting you, like you said, whether it's scoring a goal or something more challenging, your family is there with you. And just like Abraham, you're willing to go along the journey. Another way you're like Abraham, Seamus, is that you're both incredibly determined. Abraham was determined to fulfill the legacy that God promised him. That his ancestors would be as many as the stars in the sky. Your determination comes a little bit more in the sports arena whether in swimming or soccer, you're determined to give it your all. You push yourself, committing to become better at the sport. And I think I learned that you help your teammates along the way. That determination isn't just on the, in the pool or on the soccer field. You work incredibly hard when you commit to something and you dive deep to learn what you can. You impress me by putting dedication and time into learning about Abraham's life. Not something everyone does. Most kids stick to exactly what's in their Torah portion. And you're like, well, I want to know about who he was before. This is important. You were determined and you are determined to succeed. Seamus, Abraham didn't really push back against God at all, as you told us. He went along with what God asked him to do, what God challenged him to do. He didn't question God. You, on the other hand, are a little different from Abraham. Not that you question God necessarily, and this is a good thing, but you push back and you challenge others if you think something isn't right or doesn't make sense. You recognize that it's okay to ask questions and want to make sure that you're doing something for the right reasons. I respect that and think Abraham could have learned that as well. I think sometimes you like to push boundaries because it's fun and you like to see how far you can push. I also know that it will make you an incredible adult because you, will, you have learned how you can push boundaries and it will make you incredible at whatever you choose to do. Seamus, keep challenging appropriately and asking questions. One thing we as clergy love about Judaism is the fact that we are allowed to ask questions. Seamus and I were sitting in my office during one of our last meetings and in his Devar Torah had said, and, this, and a bunch of rabbis said different things and he's like, but who? I want to know who they are. That matters. Seamus, that determination and that dedication to challenging, to pushing a rabbi, that's amazing. We cannot wait to see what you make Judaism look like when you continue to ask questions. Because Judaism is not the same as it was 50 years ago, and God willing, it will not be the same in 50 years. And you and your brother and your cousins, you get to make that change and that difference. And our blessing for you is that you keep pushing and creating a positive space in the Jewish community for you and everyone else around you. That's our blessing for you today. We have another one, which is the old, not yet. You'll get to do yours. It is the oldest blessing in Judaism. It comes from the book of Numbers from our Torah, and we want to offer it to you at our ark. So invite everyone to rise as we open the ark, and we invite Seamus back up. Yevarechecha Adonai veyishmerecha May God bless you and keep you. Yaher Adonai panga velecha vichunecha May God's presence shine through you and be with you. Yisa Adonai panga velecha Ve'asem lecha 
Shalom, Shalom. She must may God give you all of life's blessings, those of family, of community, of having a home to come back to, of learning and challenging, but most of all, that of Shalom, of peace. We offer a blessing of gratitude, thanking God for giving us life, sustaining us, and allowing us to reach this moment. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Shahachianu Vekimanu Vehigianu Lazman Hazeh begin to conclude our service will remain standing if you turn to page 586 in the prayer book we turn to Alenu Alenu le shabeach ladon hakol latet gedula leotzer bereshit shelo asanu kegoye haaratzot velo samanu kemeshpachot haadama shelo sam chelkenu kahel We turn now to memory. At the end of every service, we have an opportunity to remember those who are, who are no longer with us, who have died and passed on. Today, we want to remember Jeff's dad, Richard Aaron Krantz. If there's anyone else you want to bring into this space who we want to remember, I invite you to share their la- name aloud at this point. We hold them in our hearts and we turn to page 598 and join together in the words of Kaddish. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shemei raba v'alma divrach hirote v'yamlich malchute v'chayachon v'yomechon v'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael v'agala v'izman kari v'imru amen. Yehe shemei raba mivarach le'olam omei omaya Yit barach, vit shabach, vit ba'ar, vit ramam, vit nase, vit hadar, vit halev, vit halal, shemei de kudasha, brichu. Le'ela min kol birchata vashirata, tushpechata venechamata, dami ram be'alma, v'imru, amen. Yehe shlama raba min shemaya, v'chayim alenu ve'al kol yisrael, v'imru, amen. Ose shalom b'imromav, Huya say shalom, aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru, amen. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved, as together we say, amen. shalom Exactly. So before the service, Seamus, you signed a certificate that said you did all the work that got you here. You did. Mazel tov. Congratulations. 
We have a kiddish cup for you, your very own. It might even match. It's going to match your kippa and your tali and your suit. Blue kiddish cup for you that is yours alone. You and Rory don't have to fight over one. Um, every time you do Shabbat or holidays, this is for you to celebrate that. And on behalf of our clergy and our congregation, this is also on behalf of everyone, um, we have a gift certificate for you for $250 towards one of our Kesher team trips. We go to Arizona, where we're going this year. We go to Washington, D.C. to learn about Jewish lobbying. Uh, we go to Alabama to learn about civil rights and hopefully to Israel in the next few years. And this can be towards any of those trips to come with me, probably me and Rabbi Pleasant. We have a lot of fun. We are so excited to welcome you into Jewish adulthood, which means getting to leave Temple Israel because Judaism isn't just here. It's all out in the world, and we want to help teach you what Judaism looks like. Seamus, you have been learning about Judaism here at Temple Israel and in England, and the people have really been teaching you about Judaism your whole life are here. So we're going to invite everyone to sit except your family. We're going to invite up. So Rory, I know, has a blessing for you. He's really excited, and your parents do too. So these are some gifts your parents are going to give you, and Rory are going to give you some gifts in, the, in place as words. So Rory, you're going to go first. <laughs> Seamus, I'm so proud of you. You've worked tirelessly to make this happen. In spite of the fact that we learned barely any Hebrew in London, you kept on pushing, kept learning, and didn't let it stop you. You should be proud of yourself. I've always looked up to you for your ability to bounce back from any setback and not let it ruin your day. When something happens that would make me flip out for five days and then quit, you never stop and you don't let it affect your mood. Five minutes later, you're smiling and asking me to play basketball. Thank you for being such a good brother. I hope you always know I love you. Thanks, Rory. All right. Yeah, it's long. I'll go fast. Yeah. The question is whether I can get through it without crying. That's the, uh, that's the big question here. <laughs> oh, that might good. be helpful. <laughs> Jameis, we are immensely proud of you and feel blessed to celebrate your bar mitzvah today. We were impressed you chose this journey and worried it might be too much with everything else that went with moving to Westport. Thank you to Rabbi MB and Karen Turk-Kadrain and Rabbi Heller and Howard Altman for helping Jameis reach this milestone. Seamus, over the last 13 plus years, we've taken great joy when you've persevered through challenges. Your natural ability to absorb information, light up a room, have helped you flourish and succeed, sometimes with a dizzying pace. It has been amazing to watch. However, it's when you take a knock, sometimes quite big, where you've really impressed us by demonstrating your willingness to reset, retrench, and push forward. Excuse me for a second. The last two years have been one giant transition. Started with COVID, going on to secondary school, the Kings, and then us deciding to move here, back here, eight months ago. You left behind a, a great community, a robust community. Your best friends, Kai, trusted teachers, coaches, family friends, who cheered on your successes, and who gave you respectful understa understanding when you screwed up. Through the transition, you seem to lose an intangible appreciation of your specialness. Maybe because there were fewer grand successes to measure yourself against, and definitely in part because there was no one there who understood your heart, and that it was misjudgments in your mistakes rather than bad intent. It made you uncomfortable and you may have questioned what made you you. You gave me a lot. I did. Keep going. You're doing great. <laughs> Especially last winter, it was a bit hard to watch you stumble across multiple arenas where we're used to seeing you succeed. Sports, school, theater, sometimes on the same day. But you pushed through. You remained focused at school. You made a plan to train for soccer. You performed Poseidon. 
and somehow concocted your own red carpet so that you had fun on the way out. And importantly, you accepted responsibility during some tough feedback and were always willing to make amends. Perhaps buoyed by a ski trip to Whistler with the Ken Aaron Cramps as a Grandma Ellen, time surfing in Portugal with uh, Grandpa Kevin and Grandma Leslie, and a month at camp where you could just be yourself. <laughs> You stand here today in front of us at home in Westport with a new group of friends and mentors at school on the soccer pitch and here at Temple of Israel. It is heartening to know that this is a place for you to build community and explore your identity and your developing faith. You have proven that when faced by struggle, you don't let yourself go backwards. You focus on bouncing back. And we actually didn't coordinate this with Rory. <laughs> But while you're a natural adventurer and braver than most, you do best when you're surrounded by the people, by people who have your back. Sorry, I'll just have to, okay. We are so thankful to have everyone here today. Thank you for making the trip from Portugal to Paris, uh, and Paris, Seattle and Denver, Elmore and New York City. We are missing Richard so much. Um, we know that he would be so pleased with you, Seamus. He would be proud and filled with joy at you making this milestone. It's hard to reconcile that he isn't here, but remember, he's always a part of you. And we're missing our London family of friends, and they've sent some videos to wish, the, <laughs> wish you the best as well. Seamus, you were fantastic this morning. Dad and I loved watching you thrive on stage or the BEMA. We have great memories in the audience watching you recite poems, perform plays and musicals, play sports, and anchor your relays in swimming. You take it seriously, you give everything, and you have a way of inspiring people. We encourage you to cultivate this talent and continue to step up to lead. Part of growing up will be to find your flow in the quieter moments, the moments when no one is watching, where good choices make you proud. We're here to help you as you learn how to create space for growth, how to see mistakes and failure as signs of success because you gave effort, how to build on your strengths and use your grit to adapt and refine, and how to let your immense empathy and heart and your values shine through this complicated world of teenagedom. With your grace and thoughtfulness and your intelligence and your self-confidence, we think you are going to bring an abundance to this world. Mazel tov. We love you and are always here by your side. And we're going to invite you over here with your cousins, Aviva and Charlie and Victor and Franklin. Come on up. Did I get all the names right? OK, come on up. Oh, Charlie's not a cousin? Come on up anyway, Charlie. You are on the list. Uh, oh, Bree and Jeff, you too. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Vorei Peri Hagafen Take a sip. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Hamotzi lechem min haaretz b'tehavon. I think we're ready, Rabbi MB. Yeah, those two words you learned at the beginning on the count of three, we're going to say them to Seamus. One, two, three. Mazel tov! Simen tov, mazel tov, mazel tov, simen tov, simen tov, mazel tov, mazel tov, simen tov, simen tov, mazel tov, mazel tov, simen tov, Shalom. Shalom and Mazel Tov.